Welcome back to Project Hardway. The subject vehicle for today's video is a 1997 Honda Accord. If you watched my last video, this vehicle came to me by way of my grandmother passing. Now I've got to look at a few things on it to get it ready to sell, put some money back in my mom's pocket. In this video, I'm going to start by inspecting a few key items on the vehicle. It's got a lot of oil leaks. I'm going to replace the vehicle speed sensor, and then we're going to replace all the seals and O-rings on the distributor and start moving towards other oil leak issues on the vehicle. Check it out. Car's in the shop now. I've got it up on ramps, burning the midnight oil so that I can figure out why it's leaking oil. So let's take a look around and see what it's, we got going on here. As I said before, non-VTEC F22, remanufactured alternator there. It is a mess under here, but we'll worry about that later. Right now, we just want to see why it's leaking so much oil. This valve cover gasket, like it may be hard to tell, but it looks very clean around the edge of the valve cover. Um, it looks like the gasket may have been replaced at one point. It's got some silicone there. I think I'm going to replace that just for good measure, and it may give me an opportunity to even though I, I'd probably get myself into more trouble than I want to see what that timing belt looks like. I would say that the distributor seal is definitely leaking and there's something going on over here that is causing oil or some type of fluid to get shot around the engine by the belts based on that line right there going down the hood. So I'm gonna slide into the car see if anything else under there stands out to me like possibly a uh, crankshaft seal or the oil pan gasket anything like that and see what i'm working with all right under the car here it's kind of hard to tell because the angle that i've got but everything is just covered in oil and uh it's all on the bottom of the engine block it is not leaking from up top down to here causing all this so i'm pretty certain that that uh oil pan gasket is shot shouldn't be too hard if i can get this down pipe this intermediate pipe off without destroying the hardware on it then this little cross member here let's go back up top i'm gonna pull the valve cover off Hey, I'm going to pull the valve cover off um, and go ahead and take a look at the timing belt because I don't want to make more than one order for parts on this car. Now, when I first pulled this car in the shop, I did uh, kind of take a look at a couple of things. These spark plug wires are not very old at all. They've probably been replaced not too long ago. Along with the distributor cap, it looks like it's not too bad for its age. I also part popped the uh, spark plugs out of it and they look like they look perfect. They look fine. So as far as ignition tune-up and stuff like that, I don't think there's going to be any need for it. It does need a new air filter, and I've got a fresh oil change for it. So oil change, air filter, oil leaks, and then we'll move on to a couple other things. Yeah. One of the best tools I got. gotta be careful there's always one hiding pop this bad boy off there oh yeah you're out of here oh okay so the first thing i noticed when i got the valve cover off is it is an engine and then secondly kind of as i suspected the uh like check it out here these are the spark plug uh, grommets. They look great. The valve cover gasket is very soft and malleable. It's not worn out. There's not oil seepage all over the side of the head. So that valve cover gasket has been replaced. I'm not gonna replace it. Oh, you took it off, that's okay. These, these type of deals right here, you can take these off a couple of times and they'll be okay. Just ask my 240 after all the different cam swaps and cam gear adjustments I've done. Um, doesn't leak. So that's one good thing. Take a look at that timing cover. 
or that I'm pounding to the timing belt. I don't know. It's hard. I'm gonna put the camera down and try to take a look at it for realsies. Well, I'll be. I took a look at it. I pried that cover back a little bit. I took a look at it. That timing belt's been replaced on. So, uh, no, no concerns there. That, that actually makes me feel real good about it. So, up top, not much to do. I'm going to get a seal for that uh, distributor. Order an oil pan gasket. And I'm going to send it. I think that should be good for the oil leaks. I hope. Vehicle speed sensor. VSS for all you nerds. Where my flashlight go? On this car, it is in a place. Let me tell you. There's the plug for it, you know, down there. Um, and right there below it is where it's at. Getting to that sensor, getting a tool on it. Of course, because where it's at, I couldn't put the best tool I've got on it. Getting to it, getting the plug off of it, getting the bolts broke loose, getting the bolts out, and then getting this damn thing out of there. Whew, took me longer than it takes my wife to figure out where she wants to eat. And it's because probably that bolt right there, it's a little crusty. You know, good bolts, you break them loose, and then you just, not with that guy. Wrench, wrench all the way to the end. But it's out of there. And looking at the wire and harness, I don't see anything on it that says, uh... Hey, there's an electrical issue here. So I'm going to do the right thing and just throw parts at it. I'm going to put this in with my order. Hopefully that fixes the speed sensor, the speedometer, and the check engine light. And uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've been working on trying to get the uh, oil pan off. I've got the intermediate pipe off of the exhaust manifold. Um, didn't break any hardware. I put some PB Blaster on that stuff, let it sit for a while, and uh, it came off just as nice as I could, as I could hope for it. Uh, that being said, now that I'm down to just an exhaust manifold on this thing, let's do something stupid. I'm gonna start it. Mind you, it is about 2.20 a.m. on a Monday morning right now. So let's have some fun. Here we go. Stupid. All right, here we've got an assortment of parts for the Honda. We got a full set of motor mounts, air filter, oil pan gasket, the good one, distributor O-ring, and the speed sensor. One thing I find interesting about these speed sensors is that it's not a like magnetic counter. You see there, it's kind of like the old gear-driven speedometers on the old school stuff, except it takes the gear drive and converts it into a electrical signal that feeds back to the ECU. Which makes sense why the old one doesn't work, because things that spin, they wear out. So, I don't feel like crawling under the car right now, so I'm going to take that speed sensor, put it in, then we'll get to the distributor gasket, do all the stuff up top, because I just, I don't feel like crawling on the ground right now. Okay, so time to send this thing back into the depths of the engine bay. I mean, deep. Jeez. Well, where's it even? Come on. If you're any good at working on cars, one thing you've done is learned uh, how to use your hands as eyes. Because I, I can't see what I'm doing down there right now. And I'm trying to stab that little needle off the gear drive into the sensor. Ah, got it. Now to finally put the hardware in. There we go. There we go. I, I, I dropped the bolt. That's what I did. Bink. I almost had it too, and it flipped right out of there. It's one of those bolt holes that's on the other side of the sensor in a place where you can only kind of get at it like that. See that? That's, that's, uh, it sucks. It's what it is. It's what it does. It sucks. I'm not even sure how I got that bolt out of there. Oh. Oh, thank goodness. Now if I could just get it started. Catch, you bastard. 
but I just want to feel a thread. What did Wayne say? Wobbly, 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 wobbly. Good night. Ugh. Snap that plug in. And there we go. That should fix the speedometer. That was easy. Very, I'd rather hug a cactus than do that again. I mean, just really embrace it. Um, all right, we're done with that. Next, we'll pop this distributor off and change that O-ring on it. Okay, so the uh, distributor cap comes off as easy as three Phillips head screws. And you gotta be careful sometimes because when guys get in here and they start taking that stuff off, when they put those screws back in, they sometimes wanna put so much torque on them you'd think they're trying to put their oil filter on dad but not the case with this one those screws came right out no issue so take the, take the cap off all right take the cap off set it to the side try not to uh put it put it that way so the screws don't fall out now one thing you want to do because i don't feel like trying to guess and check on the timing when i put this thing back together is i've got this paint pen and I'm going to mark the position of the rotor versus the distributor housing so that when I stab the distributor back in there, I know I've got it lined up and timed correctly. There we go. Paint marker there lining up the rotor to the distributor housing. And then I also put a paint mark on the distributor housing to the cylinder head. Um, somebody else in the past had already scratched right there, but I put that paint mark there for my own self-assurance. If you don't have a paint marker, you can always, you know, like they did, scratch it so you know where you've got it timed at. Unplug these harnesses, two 12 millimeter bolts that somebody had torqued to 150 foot pounds. And now we should be able to jiggle this thing out of here. Wow. Well, what, what did I miss? There is a third bolt hiding down there. Ah! All right, that did it. Came right off and, you know, of course, now that it's not attached to the camshaft, rotor's spinning freely. So to get that right, we'll have to uh, line all those holes up when we stick it back in. That being said, that little O-ring right there that looks more like a washer now, that is making it just, well, you know, it's, it's dirty in there. It's, it's, it's a problem. So pop that new O-ring on there, slide it back in, and the distributor oil leak should be fixed. I'm not done, am I? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, there's more than one seal in the kit. Um, that's because there's one down there. So in order to get that out, I've got to take all this apart real quick. So let's do that. Let's see what it does. And there we have it. Three screws up top, two more down there. Uh, all the components come out, and now we're left with that seal down there. Pry it out with uh, one of these guys, and then take a uh, socket of the right size, circumference, diameter, and drive it back in there. So do that real quick and show you what I got. All right, new seal is in there. There's two seals in the pack because Honda uses two different seals. I thought I had the right one until I went to put it in there. I dropped it in and it just fell in and then it fell back out. So that's not gonna seal very well. That seal right there had to be pushed in, 5.8 socket, little love, got it in there. Um, it actually was worse than I thought it was. Didn't look too bad in the housing, though you see I cleaned it up. Always clean up your surfaces for a seal before you replace it and make sure the seal's clean when you put it in. That little guy right there, that's a drain hole. It goes here and you can see it's been leaking quite a bit. So not only was this seal bad, but also the O-ring on the back of the distributor housing. So good deal there, cleaning that up. Put a little bit of grease on the inside of that. Slide the shaft back in after I cleaned it up put the distributor back together, slow it back on the car. We're done with that. All right, it's back in there. You can see my white, my white lines all line up. 
Um, got the distributor cap seal back in there. One thing I didn't talk about is the fork that goes off the back of the shaft into the camshaft. Um, that can only go on one way. It's got a snap ring around it and a drop pin that goes through it. Dig that out with your pick, drop that out, but make sure you put it back in the, in the right orientation. That way you get everything back on there, get it torqued down, clean up this stuff where your grubby little meat hooks have been grabbing all over it. Put your cap back on, ignition system's ready to go, no problems. Okay, so I hope I fixed that oil leak now to here. Thanks for watching today's video. In the next video, I'll tackle that headache of an oil pan, and then we'll get even to an even bigger headache with the motor mounts on that engine. And then we'll see where we go from there and see what I can get in there without making a video that's too long. Remember guys, sometimes you gotta do things the hard way. See you next time.